Just want to make a quick video to show what's new in Caustic 3.1. This assumes you know the app already, so if you haven't, watch the overview video first before getting into this. This just kind of adds on to it. So first thing I won't really talk about is the new synth, the KS synth, but there's a dedicated video on that, and I'll put up a link in the description. There are two new components for the modular, and one of them is very exciting because it opens up a lot of possibilities. So if you go into the generator section, you get this new machine input block. This lets you route the signal from any other machine into the modular via this component. So we select a source, and so right now I've got a subsynth set up up here. And by selecting it up here, we now get its output, granted mono output, but output coming through the modular. So now we can use the subsynth sound, run it through a whole bunch of processing in a modular, and then route it back out as the modular's output. You can run as many of these as you can fit. So the possibilities for mixing, using this as auxiliary buses for effects, um, there's a lot of possibilities with this. One of the really cool options is to send notes to the source. So what this means is that any notes sent to the modular will get also sent to the subsynth. So that's playing notes up here. Of course, like I said, you're not limited to one machine input, so you can have multiple machine inputs and then use two synths, uh, send notes to both, and then run your patterns from the modular instead of from those synths. So if I've got, by, so by sending notes, I'll be sending notes to both of these synths. So you can combine and layer sounds. So let's say I wanted the attack of a KS synth plus the um, kind of artificial sound of this subsynth, I can do this. So you can create really massive lead sounds with something like this. So if I send notes here, my pattern will get sent to both synths. Even though I haven't routed their audio, we still hear them. That's because they're coming through in the mixer as if they were played normally. So if you, if you want to route the um, output to the modular, then silence them coming out. And then, so if I play this little pattern, I don't get any sound. And now if I put a mixer block in and then mix the two inputs into here, you now get this, where you can combine them into different results. So you're not limited to just mixing them together, you can route them through effects. Speaking of effects, um, I could show you another new component, which is a K35 low pass. This is a kind of Korg Arturia style low pass filter. So very, very resonant. And so if I take the output of this and run it through this instead with a decay envelope to follow what's being played. And do something like this. So now we've got two synths being triggered, coming through as outputs being mixed together, sent through a filter, and then rerouted out as the modular's output. So then we can put effects on this, which get applied to um, the combined results, and then the possibilities get crazy. You can put a new modular, route the output of this modular into that modular using an out, uh, a machine input block and then just kind of daisy chain them all and get crazy. If you notice, there's two little notches on the uh, rack edge here. This is a feature that was asked a lot. Um, it's just a quick way to get from a machine to its mixer line or its sequencer. So if you double tap on the mixer rack here in the middle, it will bring you to the mixer and it will automatically select the correct mixer for the machine that you press. If you press, if you double tap up on the top third, it'll bring you back to that machine. If you want to go to the sequencer, double tap at the bottom third. So it's just a quick way of bouncing uh, back and forth when you're designing a sound or placing patterns to get back to that machine. Another thing that's new in here, um, something that was requested quite a lot, is an undo redo in the pattern editor. So you can now undo changes you've done and then redo them. So this works for you know, anything, selections, deletions. Um, you can get all that back and pretty much go back to where you started. This applies in the main song piano roll and um, automation editing as well. If we have a look at the beatbox, um, I've added some 
velocity sensitive pads, which now replace the line if you toggle them. And this just allows you to record using velocity. So higher uh, up here on the pad will be low velocity. And then as you go down, it's higher velocity. So this lets you record with more precision with using your fingers to kind of tap the notes in and uh, get more expressive control. Another thing that was requested quite a lot is a metronome counting. So if you're recording from a pattern, you can long press the metronome icon now and see your count in measure. So you can do um, one measure, two measure, and that gives you a count in. So, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, now start recording. So if I press uh, record and then play, it's important to have it stopped before you start playing. Uh, it'll show you a count in here and then it starts recording. So now it would be recording at that point. So you can change that to uh, up to four measures. And then another thing that's um, new is more MIDI features. So if you go into the MIDI tab, um, you can now assign CC mappings to all of the machines. So you can map these to whatever you've got. Um, if you want to assign each one, let's say oscillator one waveform, uh, I want to assign that to one of the knobs on my MIDI controller here. I'll just press learn and then I'll play with that knob and then it recorded. You can also type it in if you prefer and you can clear it if you want to get rid of that. So the, the mapping is saved and will apply to any instance of that machine type. The only exception is the modular. Because the modular's components can be dynamic, it, you, de you decide what's in there. Um, when you select a modular, it will ask you to select a patch that you will be mapping. So once you select the patch, then it shows you all the controls in it and what can be mapped. So then you um, assign your CCs to that. And one thing that's important is if you've got it loaded already, it's important to reload it again after you've assigned. So if I, if I have this up right now and I map this acid preset, um, if I assign, let's say, low pass filter cut off to my mod wheel um, and then go back, if I move my mod wheel, it doesn't actually do anything yet. I have to reload that to have it be affected. That's because if it's loaded on screen, I don't know if you've modified it or not. So it, you have to make sure you're reloading the original for which you've assigned CCs. Um, that's just a little tricky bit with the modular because of its dynamic nature. But all the other synths will kind of retain that and apply to any instance of that synth and across your songs and everything. So you notice down here, there's a little pitch bend range. There's support for pitch bend. Um, it's fairly limited right now because it's mostly just for um, live play. It can't be recorded into an automation control um, curve yet, but it's useful for live play and it's been requested. So you can control the pitch bend range and how much it applies so you can use it on all synths, except for the KS synth, which because of its algorithm, um, you can't actually pitch a note up that'll make a horrible sound in the tap delay line. So it applies to all the other synths, uh, obviously not the beatbox, but all the other synths have pitch bend except for KS synth. There are a few other things um, that's new in Caustic 3.1, one of which is skins. So you can now choose a different skin if you wanted And so this is just getting started on the forum and we've got, you know, people, pioneers kind of hacking away at it and coming through. So hopefully there'll be more skins coming through, but it's just an interesting little thing. Uh, there's a few that ship with it that I find were high quality. So they come with it and it just, you know, just a different look. And it depends on the situation. If you're in a, a bright bus or in a dark studio, you can switch pa uh, skins accordingly or, you know, go crazy and learn to make your own. All right. That's pretty much what's new in Caustic 3.1. So have fun.